Hello everyone, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training. Thank you for joining me today. Today we'll be looking at the different types of composite frack plugs and comparing them from an operational standpoint. Now if you're not familiar with plug and perf operations, I do recommend you go to my website and uogtraining.com and look at a five minute overview of plug and perf completions under the blog tab. And actually that's where this idea for the module came from. Is uh, This was a question that was posted on a five minute overview of plug and perf completions regarding of how you pressure test plugs whenever you're doing plug and perf operations. In order to answer that we have to look at the different types of plugs and the different operations that follow with them. There are two different types of composite frag plugs for plug and perf operation. The first one we'll look at is the ball isolating plug that you see at the top. So if we look at a cutaway view you've got your plug sitting in your casing uh, but the mandrel through the plug is hollow so fluid can actually flow through the plug until you pump a ball when the ball lands on seat that's what provides your isolation uh, pr from the previously fractured stage the other alternative is a self-isolating plug that's the one on the bottom so if we look at the cutaway it has a self-isolating device built into the plug so as soon as the plug is set in your casing whenever you go to pump it engages that self-isolation device and you have instant isolation so let's look at what this looks like from an operational standpoint. So the first scenario we'll look at is just your standard plug and perf operation and nothing goes wrong in this instance. It's a very smooth overall operation. So you frack the stage, you run in with your uh, bottom hole assembly, pump it down to the intended depth, and then you send your electric signal through your wire line and that sets your plug. You pull away from the plug with the setting tool and then uh, in this particular case we're going to look at the self-isolating plug so since you have the self-isolating plug you pressure test when the device engages you have a good pressure test you know that the plug is set and in the right place and then you can bleed off your pressure and commence your operations so you send another electronic signal down your wire line fires your first set of perforations pull up hole to the depth of the second set send another electronic signal fire your second set of perforations and then pull up for the third uh, set of perforations and send a electronic signal and then you just repeat the process for this example we'll only use three clusters so you pull out of hole with your wire line and then as soon as you're rigged up with your pressure pumping crew then you can begin fracturing with this type of plug because you've already got that isolation now the same scenario with the ball isolating plug, we run our wireline assembly down, set our plug with using electric signals through the wireline, and then once we've uh, the plug, we can pull off the plug. And the ball isolating plug, you cannot pressure test because it does have that hollow mandrel. So you commence your perforating uh, process at that point. Send your electric signal through your wireline, fires this first set of perforations, pull up hole another electronic signal, fire your second set, and then pull up hole again. Another electronic signal fires your third set of perforations. Pull out of hole, and then once you've pulled out a hole, you pump fluid into the well bore through the perfs that are in the well, and in that fluid you'll pump your ball down hole, and once it lands on the plug, that provides the isolation from below, and then you can begin your uh, next stage frack job. But let's look at another scenario. And in this scenario, not everything goes quite as smoothly. So we go in, we uh, pump our assembly down hole, we set our plug, and this is a self isolating plug again. So we pressure test, make sure that the plug is set. And once we've done that, we send our electronic signal through the wire line to fire perforation guns. But in this scenario, the perforation gun doesn't fire. So what we have to do is we have to pull out of hole with the perforation guns and redress them. The problem here is that you've completely isolated your well now, so you have no capability to pump into the well. So in order to run redressed perforation guns into the well bore, you have to mobilize a coil tubing unit or a wireline tractor in order to be able to get it to that depth. Now it depends on how available and how costly those services are as to how uh, how long it will take you and how costly it will be to you. 
But if we look at this scenario with the ball isolating plug, go ahead and set our plug, pull away from the plug. Once again, we can't pressure test it because we can flow below it, but then we go to fire a perforation gun and the guns don't fire. So we pull out of hole with the perforation guns, we redress them at surface, but we still have the capability to pump into that previously fractured stage. So whenever we redressed our perforation guns, we pump them back down hole. Once they're at the intended depth, then you just uh, commence your operations as planned. And sending electronic signals down there to uh, fire your perforations and moving on about your plug and perf job as you originally had intended. Now once again, because this is the ball isolating plug, you do pump fluid in your well once you've uh, perforated. Pump it out of the existing perforations, pump your ball down hole. When the ball lands on seat, it isolates and then you begin your next stage frag job. Today, once again, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to contact me uh, at the email listed below or comment them on any of the social media pages listed below. Thanks again. Have a great day.